coming up on FaceTime. A German architect with a passion for both sustainability and innovation. New materials can be first look quite boring, yes. but they are amazing what you can solve with them. And as an architect, you have to have an overview of everything. This is more than that, mm. because you have to get an idea for a building. Mm. So it's an art-based thing. We are happy if we are called artists. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guangdong has worked internationally in many different sectors, many times with Germany, a very well-respected country here in China. Germans are increasingly contributing to the architectural scene in Guangdong. Today's guest is a German architect with a passion for both sustainability and innovation. Gute Eger, welcome to FaceTime. Thank you for your time. Thank you for it's a joy to have you in. Me. Gute, many people, when asked to define architecture, have many, many different ideas of it. What is your understanding of architecture? There are two things about it. It's um, a cultural thing and a technical thing. So there are also two kinds of architects. One are more engineers and one are more like artists. Mm. So it's always um, yeah, um, the, the difficulty or the differences uh, to come together. And as an architect, you have to have an overview of everything. You don't mm. know the, uh, all the details, sure, but you sure. know how to bring the people mm. together. Mm. That's what our, yeah, our business makes so interesting, mm. dealing with people, dealing with a lot of different kind of people, mm. Mm. and finding out their idea and yeah, implementing our own way to bring a perfect solution to mm. them. Germany has got a very, very high reputation for architecture. What is it about German architecture that really sets it above most other forms? Mainly we are well known for technical details. Mm, mm. In Germany you have a lot of uh, standards. Um, in the 1920s in the Darm uh, Technical University mm. of Darmstadt nearby Frankfurt, uh, we defined a lot of um, technical standards uh, by the professor Neufert. And this book he wrote in the mm. 1920s is now used everywhere in the world. Mm. Yeah. And we also have the standards for how to define um, a toilet, how to build up a, a wall, an envelope wall. Everything, um, yeah, we have, mm. we have technology mm. for that. We have to focus on details, but it is more than that mm. because you have to get an idea for a building. Mm. The client comes to you and says, oh, I need, I need an office. Mm. So I have 20 people working there and that's it. Yes. So you know you need a toilet, you need three rooms and a meeting room and for the boss mm. room. Um, but what's the idea behind that? What yeah. is the special thing? How you want to present yourself? Mm. This mm. is what an architect yes, uh, brings in. So it's an art-based thing, in a way. We are happy if we are called artists. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you are. I'd, I'd like to, to walk through one of your projects, um, as it were, from conception to completion and the one that I'm thinking about is the one that you were involved with in Dongguan I think it was the International Health Management uh, Center. They want to yeah, build an uh, international health center mm. where uh, people can uh, recreate and, and also a um, hospital will be there and for the first building the management building you have to find a metaphor for this building and uh, I was thinking about the DNA mm -hmm. as a symbol as a metaphor for that you can uh, that you have a tool you can uh, deal with to make your life better. Mm. Uh, and this DNA I built in a precious box, mm. which is broken in the center, and the DNA comes out. And this will be my uh, exhibition center. Yes. So while you're in the office and walking down the DNA, you can go into uh, exhibition rooms mm. and also look outside, see the future area, how it will be built up and be informed about what mm. you can mm. do there in the future. Mm. How do you see, if you could identify the key difference between modern Chinese architecture and, say, German architecture, what would they be? Some friends I have here in China, uh, which are architects, they now start to um, think about their own history mm. again. Um, I would say architects, even maybe 10 or 20 years ago, they didn't care about this. Mm. They only focused on 
new modern mm. maybe Western style copy uh, thing. Yes. yeah also copy mm. they, they had to go on mm. yeah? so that's okay but now um, these young architects about 30 maybe even 40 years old um, they see what they have here they may study it in, in America mm. in, in Europe where else they come back and then they, s uh, they feel a difference mm. for themselves yes, yes. so they see oh I can combine best of both mm. worlds the difference is in, for example, in Germany, uh, we already had this process uh, 30 years ago. Yes. In the 1950s, we, we demolished the whole cities. Um, and in the 90, yeah, late 1970s in Germany, we started to think about mm. our old cities, yes. uh, our heritage, yeah? Um, yeah, where we come from. And this is also something which is special. Mm. Mm. And then we started to work with this in, in China. This process mm. is now starting as well. Starting to come. The other cliche that is thrown around is a green building, mm -hmm. um, minimum carbon footprints mm. and all yeah, these sort of yeah, things. Yeah. What, what are the ingredients that a building needs to be really regarded as a green building? It mm. comes down to one point. How much energy you need in one year to heat or cool down this place? Right. There is um, a figure, um, for example, for passive house, we have 1.5 liter crude oil, the energy of 1.5 liter crude oil for one square meter of your house. For one year. For one year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you have a passive house. Yes. If you use more energy, you, you have a normal house. If you put more money, in more technology into a building, you now even can have plus energy houses. So you harvest energy. In China, because I have to admit, it costs a lot of money sure. to make mm. a building mm. a perfect insulation mm. and, and so on, a, a lot of details. But you can improve a lot by doing a little. Mm. Yeah, even if you say now it's only fifty percent what I needed before. Yeah, before you needed twenty liters. Now yep. you need 10, ten liters. liters it's yeah. a lot, and um, this is easily to achieve mm. in China. We mm. can do that. And Chinese government is aware of that and is also caring for mm. it. Mm. Um, we have the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft in Germany. This is the, yeah, the biggest and oldest research, state-owned uh, research uh, center. And uh, they care for this and they work together with mm. Chinese mm. government as well. Mm. So there's a good relationship yeah. between yeah. this. And um, yeah, the things are going Coming, yeah, coming better, yeah, yeah, step by step. Yeah. To achieve the goal of building an eco city and green architecture, different materials are needed. Guangdong is taking a new alternative route with the application of energy saving and green building materials. Gunther has brought some to the studio. For example, we can start with this glass here. Mm -hmm. um, as you see, first thing, this is an insulation glass. Oh, yes. With yes. two glasses, yeah, and the yeah. distance in between. So um, the distance in between is like an insulation, mm. uh, air mm. insulation. Maybe um, you can hold it perpendicular to the camera so they yeah. can see the sandwich effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. like can this. Yeah. See here, the yeah. sandwich is That's glass, it. Exactly, glass exactly. with the sandwich here. Mm. And this one is a special one. It even has an integrated solar cell. Mm -hmm. So we can use it uh, for, as I said before, harvesting energy. Mm. Um, on the one hand, especially in Guangzhou, we need light in our rooms, of, of course. course. Yeah. But um, it's always too much. <laughs> mm. So with this uh, window, uh, we still get 10% of the light. And if we have a big window, it's, it's totally mm. enough. For energy saving, we have this, this tinted glass. Yes. Yeah? Tinted with uh, coating m uh, made of uh, metal. And also we have, again, this the sandwich, uh, effect. sandwich effect. Um, in nowadays, we have this kind of glass, even clear glass, and it still will block about 80-90% of the heat wave. Mm. The, the visual light is going through. W but w without tinting? Without tinting, yeah. yeah. Amazing. And uh, you can buy this as well in, in, in China.